Good day, kids. Today, we're going to talk about conducting a guided survey. Through guided surveys, we can learn how to group and classify different aspects of our environment, such as the animals that live in our community and the plants that grow in specific areas. In this lesson, you will, first, identify the science process skills and attitudes needed in conducting a guided survey. Second, apply science process skills and attitudes in conducting a guided survey about environmental issues and concerns and lastly, state the importance of surveys as a scientific tool for collecting data and making informed decisions. Activity number one, one. Look around your kitchen and find five different objects, two. In your notebook, write the names of the objects and identify them as natural or man-made, three. Classify the object as biodegradable or non-biodegradable. Copy the table in your notebook and write the answers in the appropriate columns. Activity number 2, 1. Observe the pictures of the rocks below, 2. Write a short description of each rock, include details about each rock's size, shape, color, texture, and any other distinctive features, 3. Tell what makes the rocks different from each other. Activity number 3. Read the short dialogue between two friends and write your answers to the guide questions in your notebook. Did you understand the conversation between Lily and Max? Now, let us answer the guide questions in your notebook. Now, let us discuss about science process skills. Science process skills are essential in conducting a guided survey. They enable you to collect data, organize information, communicate your findings, adapt to new knowledge, and explore the world with a curious mind. These skills not only enhance your scientific understanding but also contribute to your growth as a critical thinker and problem solver. Let's take a look at the science process skills needed to conduct a guided survey effectively. 1. Observing. Observing means using your senses, especially your eyes, nose, and ears, to carefully look at things, smell scents and odors, and listen to the sounds around you. In the activity number two, you observe two rocks to describe the shape, color, and texture of each. When conducting a survey about waste management, we need to observe the waste disposal methods used in a community. We look at whether people throw their trash in the right bins or if they leave it in an open or public place. With the goal of further obtaining information about waste management, observing helps us understand how waste is handled. 2. Predicting The National Science Teaching Association, an organization of science teachers in the United States that is dedicated to science education, defines predicting as making informed guesses about future outcomes based on current evidence, observations, or patterns. For example, 
When you look at the sky and see dark clouds, you can predict that it will rain soon. Before conducting a survey, researchers often have specific hypotheses or expectations about what they will discover. Predicting plays an important part in formulating these hypotheses. For example, if you are conducting a survey on waste management in your community, you might predict that improper waste disposal is an important issue. Also, predicting helps in making relevant and meaningful survey questions. Researchers also predict the types of responses they might receive, which ensure that the formulated questions are clear and aligned with the research objectives. 3. Grouping and Classifying it is a scientific skill in which we organize things based on their similarities and differences. For example, in science, we group animals into classes, such as mammals, reptiles, and birds, to help us understand and study them better. In a waste management survey, grouping and classifying is very important. We can classify waste into different types, such as organic, recyclables, and non-recyclables. Grouping waste materials in this way allows us to see patterns and understand how different types of waste can be managed. 4. Measuring Measuring is an important part of collecting data. It involves choosing the right method and tools, making sure the tools work correctly, measurements or observations, and accurately recording the data. For example, if we are studying the amount of waste produced in our community, we would first think of measuring the amount of generated waste by counting the number of filled trash bins or getting the weight of the collected waste. Measuring helps us calculate and understand the scale or extent of the waste issue. 5. Inferring. Inferring is the process of using clues and information to figure out something that is not directly said. Inferring about something is like being a detective. For example, you see wet footprints on the floor. You would then infer that someone walked inside with wet feet. If most members of a group buy ice cream, we can infer that it is their favorite treat. This means that inferring is done to make conclusions from the collected data. Researchers examine the responses to survey questions and make inferences about the patterns, trends, or relationships observed. For example, if the survey results show that a big portion of the community is unaware of proper waste disposal methods, you can infer that there is a need for education in this area. Six. Communicating. Communication is the act of sharing information and ideas with others. It involves asking questions, sharing information, and listening to others. In science, it is essential to communicate our findings and thoughts clearly. We use words, drawings, and sometimes even models to explain our discoveries. It is like telling a story, but with facts and evidence. When we communicate well, others can understand what we have learned and built upon it. When conducting a survey on waste management, we communicate by talking to people about their waste habits. We ask questions like Do you recycle at home? And how do you dispose of your food waste? We also share our findings with others, such as classmates, teachers, and community members. Effective communication is essential in making others aware of the importance of proper waste management. Aside from these science process skills, the right attitude is also important. In science, open-mindedness is essential because it helps us explore and discover new things. Sometimes, what we believe to be true may change when we learn more and discover new understanding about something. Being open-minded allows us to accept changes and adapt to new information. It is like having an open door to new knowledge.
Activity number four apply the science process skills in real life scenarios by doing the tasks in the following situation. Write your answers in your notebook. Activity number five, in your notebook, create a respondent profile like the on the next page. Choose five people in your community. Complete their details in your respondent's profile. Then, have them answer the survey questions about environmental issues. Record their answers in your notebook. Organize the information and data gathered from the survey and record the total number of responses to the questions. Create a similar form in your notebook. Conducting a guided survey involves gathering information from a group of people to understand their thoughts, opinions, or experiences about a specific topic. Steps to conduct a guided survey 1. Define your objective. Clearly outline the purpose of your survey. What do you want to learn or understand from the participants? 2. Prepare questions. Make a set of questions that are related to your objective. Make sure the questions are clear, easy to understand, and relevant to the topic. 3. Choose your participants. Decide who are the people you want to survey. They could be your classmates, community members, or anyone relevant to your objective. 4. Explain the purpose. Start by explaining the reason for a survey. Let the participants know how their responses will be used and why their inputs is valuable. 5. Present the questions. Give your questions to the participants. Make sure they understand the questions and are comfortable providing their answers. 6. Record responses. Collect the responses from the participants. This can be done on paper or digitally, depending on your resources. 7. Analyze the data, examine the responses to identify common themes, trends, or patterns. This will help you draw conclusions from the survey. 8. Share findings, share the results of the survey with the participants and anyone else interested in the topic. This could be in the form of a report, presentation, or discussion. 9. Take action. If the survey results reveal areas for improvement or change, consider taking action based on the feedback. 10. Thank participants. Express appreciation for the participants for their time and input. Their involvement is essential for the success of the survey.
Activity number six, arrange the steps of conducting a guided survey in the correct order. Write one to seven to indicate the correct arrangement of steps. Do activity number seven. Study the diagram. From the information presented in the diagram, form sentences that state important things you have learned in this lesson. Write the sentences in your notebook. For your reflection, copy the table below in your notebook. Read each statement carefully. In the second column, write, yes if the statement is 100% true and you have no more questions, somewhat if you still have some questions or areas to review, or, not yet if you need further clarification or require more time to revisit the lesson.